Good morning. Welcome back to the Untitled Knitting Podcast. We are doing this podcast today, vlog style, and we're going to check it out and see how it feels because quite frankly, vlogs are more fun to film and easier to edit. And my camera's still broken. So besides, you know, my feelings about the matter, logistically, I can't film a proper podcast right now. I have my normal setup back there, as you can see. So we're kind of, we're kind of in the right space. But besides that, I woke up about an hour ago, maybe, and I took a shower and I'm still damp and fresh faced from that. I am not putting makeup on today or anything because I'm not planning on, I'm not going to work at the bakery or anything and I am not going to put makeup on to go to the grocery store, which is the only time I plan on leaving the house today. I need eggs so that I can make eggnog. How festive. Speaking of festive, I have my coffee this morning and I put cinnamon in it because it is the season. Happy November. I honestly cannot remember how long it's been since I last podcasted. It's been a couple of weeks, maybe a few. Oh, the sound quality in this room is so much different, but I wanted to turn around and show you the leaves outside my window. They are falling off, but they're still pretty colorful. They don't look nearly as colorful on camera as they do in real life. But also, another thing you can't tell, but it snowed last night. It was our first snow. And I'm so excited. We don't get snow like at all in South Carolina. So I'm very excited to have had snow last night. It's already melted because it was a very light sprinkling, but it was snow nonetheless. So I am excited. I'm excited to be vlogging with you guys today. What do we call this? A vlog cast? Because we can call it a vlog cast. I actually filmed one a couple weeks ago and just never edited it and uploaded it. So we're just gonna like pretend that never happened and start over from scratch. So I guess the format of a vlog cast is gonna be basically the same as a regular podcast. Like I'll show you my FOs and my whips and stuff, but I'm just gonna do it like more casually and talk about other stuff like within, not so quite so uh, formulaic, if you will. But yeah, I finished pretty much, it's a mess right now, but my entire house is a mess because my life is a mess. It's just, but I did finish up pretty much setting up my craft room and stuff. I did do a tour, filmed a tour. Uh, I just haven't edited it and uploaded it yet. I also did a stash tour, which is a lot of fun. And that also needs to be quickly edited and uploaded, which I may do today. We'll see, we'll see how I'm feeling. I mean, edit it today. I probably won't upload it today because two videos in the same day is ridiculous when I go weeks without uploading a video. Um, okay, actually, what I'm gonna show you first are new acquisitions because I want to. And who says I can't? First of all, I have acquired, I haven't been shopping as much as I was because it is irresponsible. <laughs> so, I've only acquired a couple of sock sets and um, a couple of miscellaneous skeins here and there, but I did get a skein of yarn for a hat that I have yet to start. That is water for my hair because my hair is wet. I'm not that sloppy yet today, but I got a skein of yarn from, made by Haley Bailey. And this is her color Birch, and I've been yearning after this color ever since I saw it, but I wanted a nice chunky yarn to make a nice chunky hat with, and so I got that. And I also picked up a skein of yarn from Flower Hill Fleeces. This is a local yarn dyer slash sheep farmer to me. She lives just outside the city. And this is black, just black undyed wool from one of her sheep. I cannot remember the sheep's name, but she did tell me when I bought it. And she was telling me about how the sheep is getting older and as they get older, you know, black sheep get grayer. So her her wool will never be this black again. And honestly, this is the first skein of black yarn I've ever bought. So 
I love that for many reasons. I got, I don't think there's anything new in the sock yarn category, in the plain sock yarn category. I did get a sock set or two, which would be, oh, I'm actually gonna set you here. It is not a very pretty backdrop. It's just like my work table, which has all my crap on it right now. And the lighting is terrible, but it's just for a moment. I, I joined quarter four Q4 of the Farmer Farmer's Daughter Fibers Sock Squad, and I just got my November Sock Squad package in the mail. So if you haven't received yours and you've signed up for it and you don't want a spoiler, look away, but I'm gonna show it now. It is this lovely, oh my God, these colors are perfect. I love them so much. This is actually DK weight, 250 gram skeins, which is not what I was expecting at all, but it is slippers. It's gonna be slippers and I love that. I love that so much. Also, I placed another order with Little Lion Head Knits. Shock and surprise. It's not a surprise at all. This angle is not flattering at all. What about over here? Oh, backlit, even better. If I stand in front of the window, it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so Little Lion Head Knits is one of my favorite yarn dyers. I have a very hard time saying no to any shop update she does. I just, we sh some yarn dyers, you just share an aesthetic with them. Everything they dye is just perfectly to your taste. Well, I missed out on one of the sock sets that I wanted from her. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was the blue and, uh, it was probably blue and orange because it's always blue and orange. I always loved the blue and orange ones. Um, but it was like an autumnal one and it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the Dutch courtyard one because I already have that one, but it was a different bluish orangey one. But she did have a sock set with her vintage plaid blanket, which is this color. Oh my God, part of her vintage plaid blanket series. And this lighting is making me super grainy. All right, there has to be a happy medium here. Maybe in here. I'm not near my stash. <laughs> Terrible, but whatever. But her sock set was this color with like a green almost this color, which I really liked, but I wasn't 100% sold on it. So I ended up buying the sock set by itself with this color, which is Let's Picnic, I think. But it's a super vibrant, almost neon, like reddish orange. And I just, orange on orange, I love them together. They're so good. I'm so happy with this decision. So this is a sock set that I curated myself, not one of her sock sets. But either way, I'm still very excited about it. I'm very pleased. All right. I think the only other sock set additions I have... Oh, no. That can't be right. I've only been allowing myself to buy sock sets because it's just one thing. And the one thing is not that bad. Um, again, from Flower Hill Fleeces, the black yarn I showed you. She also dyes yarn. Not only makes yarn from uh, her own sheep. But she dyes yarn as well, and she did this Pittsburgh-themed yarn again. She's the one who did the Aquagani yarn that I made socks out of a while back. But this is her fall color, and it's called Pittsburgh Spice Latte. The main color, uh, the contrast color is called Cranberry. But it's just so cute, I love it so much. So that's a fall socks that I got. And I got my Salem sock set from uh, Sorella which is super cute, very interesting. And I also got my pre-order in from my Long Dog Yarn slash Knit Two Together collab. And this is the sock set from that. So cute. Long Dog Yarn has been killing it. Like there are lots of sets or lots of yarn colors lately that I've just been, they've been speaking to me. Oh, last one, there is one more. I also got my Woolberry um, National Park, my road trip sock set in this was a pre-order but i did her road trip uh mystery game road trip game and so i got my discount code and i got the white sands national park set because 
How perfect is it? It is so perfect, so beautiful. I'm gonna set you down now. While, oh, you were not leaning against something solid. While we put the sock sets back in the sock set basket. I told myself that I was only going to buy as many sock sets as would fit in this basket. And as you have seen, I have already failed with that. Um, because that orange sock set I just got from Little Lion Head Knits is not in here. And my new sock squad set does not fit in here either. To be fair, I was only expecting a single skein of fingering weight yarn from the sock set, so or from the sock squad. So it would not have gone in here if that were the case. But you know. All right. The last acquisitions, not the last acquisitions, but the next acquisitions I got are, I also ordered the Salem Wool Wash. This is my water cup for my painting with my Salem sock set from Sorella. It smells so good. I also made my first Tuft Woolens purchase and I ordered a bar of wool wash in the orange spice cake scent. I was waiting for this to come out. It smells so good. And I also bought two of these hand balms from Tuft Woolens. I bought Mossy Woods, which is this one. And I also bought her, um, that special limited edition pine flavor. I cannot remember the name of it. And it is, oh, it's actually in that uh, project bag. So I'll tell you when we get to it, once I can start going through project bags. Mm -hmm. for new acquisitions, except for two project bags. My first project bag is one I just mentioned to you, the Long Dog Yarn slash Knit Two Together collab. I got the, it came with that sock set, the blue and yellow sock set, and also this adorable bag. It's fireflies, it's so cute. It's got like a metal ring to hook keys or something on, and it's got the little tag on the front, and it's drawstring, and it's a great size. I actually have two projects in it right now because I am having a hard time with everything right now. The other new acquisition I got is, this is actually the last one, I believe, but this is a bag from Woodsy and Wild. I love, she's another maker whose taste seems to very strongly overlap with mine. But I got her summer, her last summer limited run uh, collection. I got this bag from her. I love this size bag. It is so perfect. It fits a pair of socks or a hat or a shawl. And I love it. I just love it. I'm gonna take a sip. I totally lied. You probably have seen it already, a peek of it in this video. But I have one more acquisition, just a moment. I bought. 52 weeks of socks. That's quite a big acquisition that I'm very excited about. <sighs> My back has been killing me because of working at the bakery. The night shifts that I do there are killer on my back. So I'm probably going to sit down for the next bit. I will find a place to set you and so this project bag, real quick, before I continue, this project bag has something in it, but I haven't actually started that project yet, so I will not show you anything to do with it. Um, if I sit here, the lighting's no good. It would have been nice to be able to sit at that table, but the lighting here is so hit or miss. So I'm gonna have to find a way to prop you up over here at the drafting table to show you my whips. Do I have any FOs? <laughs> I do have FOs. <laughs> Please pardon the bedroom. It's about to get dark and really messy. So don't look too hard. I'll point you to the ceiling a little bit. But I have two. That's not one. I have two FOs, which upsets me quite a bit because I've been knitting quite a lot, but I will talk about that more here in just a moment. 
my two FOs are, I don't even, did I, I had this finished. Did I have this finished in the last video? I do not remember. My Halloween sweater is finished. All right, I'm gonna lay this here. My Halloween sweater's finished. It is a contrast sweater by Petite Knit and I made it out of LaRue hand-dyed cotton in the color What Lurks in the Shadows and Rusted. And I modified the sleeves to be poofy and then drastically uh, decreased at the wrists to make them uh, puffy sleeves. But it is so soft and this cotton is super weighty. So it's just really pleasant to wear. It is no longer Halloween, but uh, it's vaguely enough Halloween that I can still wear it. It's just gray and orange. So very pleased with that one. Pleased as punch, if you will, with how that one turned out. And the other FO I have are these, my pumpkin pie socks. I don't think these were finished last time you, last time you saw. Um, I just did a vanilla sock recipe, like my basic vanilla sock recipe, but I added a little bit of a rib, like a three by one rib around the ankle and then just on the top of the sock. I really like how they turned out. They are super cute. I used a scrap Brooklyn Tweed Peary for the heels, toes, and just a little tip on the cuff. And before I go into other whips, I want to show you real quick that I had started Halloween socks out of this gorgeous Desert Vista Dye Works Halloween colorway called Trick or Treat. And I had bought a uh, mini in this dark gray color, which is pretty much perfect for heels, toes, and cuffs. And also this orange, which is also pretty much perfect. In heels, toes, and, for heels, toes, and cuffs. And these were from a completely different brand. What were they from? It is the Knitwit Smarties. And the, color, the orange colorway is glazed over carrots. And I do not remember what the gray was. And I do not have, I do not have the tag for it. No, I do. Nope, that's glazed over carrot. Knitted Wit. Sorry. Oh, carbon. I kept the tags for those. Who even would have thunk? Who would have thunk it? But anyways, I got fairly far on these, like almost done with one sock. And I realized that they're giant. And my options were to either give them to Bradley, which I didn't really want to do because these are like the full pair that you can get from a sock set. Um, like I bought these, like I bought this for myself, so I wanted them for myself. Uh, or start over. I don't know why these turned out so much larger but they did. I did the same stitch count and everything. They're just, they're big. Like, I guess I could continue them and just, they'll just, like they fit kind of, they're just loose. Like they'd be cute house socks or something, but I don't know. I don't know what to do. So I just put them aside and started something else. Speaking of starting something else, I've been stressing about getting Christmas knitting done and I'm not, like I'm not, I'm not that person who pardon, knits something for everybody for Christmas because I mostly knit for myself. I'm a very selfish knitter and not everyone is knit worthy, so I'm not going to waste my time. But the few people who are knit worthy, it is a very good option, I think, to hand make gifts. I think it is sustainable. I think it's fun. I think it is just good for everyone all around. But I have uh, organized all of my Christmas knitting projects and have them sitting out here on this table waiting to go. As soon as I finish one, I can start another. So I have what is left of my Aquagani sock set to make a pair of socks for my stepmom for Christmas. I have a Explorer Knits and Fibers sock set. This is their Dopio in Florence and Macchiato, which is the contrast color from her Italy collection. I know you can't see very well in this light. It's terrible, I'm so sorry. Uh, but these, this isn't very important. I will show you better once I have them actually like cast on and stuff. This will be a pair of socks for my brother. 
And then the last one I have over here is I have caked up two skeins of this color is called eucalyptus. You can see it's a little bit more green there. Like I said, I'll show you better whenever it's time to actually cast them on. I've uh, caked up two skeins of eucalyptus. I am holding off because I need new needles. These are the only size two needles I have that are the right length and I hate them. I hate them with a passion. So I need to go buy a new pair of needles. But this will be Brad's Christmas sweater. And by Christmas sweater, I mean just a sweater for Christmas, not Christmas themed. But I'm gonna use the flax light pattern for it. I don't think I'm going to do the contrast uh, garter stitch texture down the arms. I think I'm just gonna use this as a pattern for a basic sweater, but we will see. I may add something interesting on there. And I am going to do the optional short row shaping. That is a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away. But yeah, that is what I have planned coming. And in that other, that woodsy and wild bag with the something in it that I told you I hadn't started yet, that is a, another sock set for myself. That is a Little Lion Head Knits sock set, her apple picking sock set, which I feel like I showed you in a previous video. I have art stuff out everywhere because I made art yesterday and I probably will continue to make art today. But that does mean that everything is a bit of a mess. That's a little better. All right. My very flattering little wet hair puddles. Okay, we have you at a much better angle now. It's not a very beautiful backdrop, but at least you can see what's going on. Now I get to show you whips. All right, where do we start? I guess we'll start with Brad. I have in this bag, my Firefly bag from Knit Two Together, two pairs of socks. If you remember my very first episodes, I made cottage socks and I struggled with them greatly for myself and, well, for Brad, and ended, they ended up being for myself because I could not get the sizing correct. So I have finally cast on Brad's pair of cottage socks and it is going to be a disaster. Give me a moment. I have finished one of them. I shouldn't say they're cottage socks because I actually switched up the pattern and I used the rye pattern from Tin Can Knits, which is a free sock pattern, worsted weight as well, and told me to use a completely different needle size. So worked out the first time, the first try. I don't know why I didn't just use that pattern the first time. I just didn't do the garter ridge down the front. I just did a complete stockinette. And this a bad boy came together very quickly, but look at how gorgeous these colors are. These are Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in Yellowstone, I believe. And, oh, don't make me lie. Anyways, it's the same two colors from our last pair of uh, socks out of this yarn. I'm just did his in the opposite colors because we only had enough to make two pairs of socks, but we'd have to switch the heels, toes, and cuffs. So we will have matching socks, but they will be in op opposite colors. I cast on his second sock yesterday, but having two projects in one bag is a disaster. Please never do it. Do as I say, not as I do. So let me try and get this stuff out of here. All right. These are being knit on size three needles, which is very different from the size fives I was using before, which is why they turned out so large. All right, out. I cast on the second one yesterday and it's the same sock, so it'll be good. I really love those colors. They are so good. Foothills is the other one. Foothills and Yellowstone. Foothills is the dark green, this color, and Yellowstone is the light green. All right, the second, oh, my dog broke off a piece of the yarn. So I need to get rid of that. It's just adding to the mess in here. The second pair of socks in here are actually gonna be Brad's birthday socks. I let him pick out a, a sock set from the Explorer Knits pre Italy pre-order. And he picked the Roma and Trastevere colorway. 
and I have finally started his pair. I already made a pair of socks in this colorway that you have seen in this uh, podcast somewhere for my brother, but Brad picked out the colors, so it was about time for me to make his pair. I cast on 68 stitches for this because 72, I did his last pair of socks, 72, and they were a little too big and 64 is too small. So I did my own maths. So these are 68 stitches. I started the heel yesterday and got a good ways through before I realized I had dropped a stitch. So I had to go backwards. I am doing a fish lips kiss heel. So I'm, I don't know if I'm going to take it all the way out and just start the heel over because we'll see if I can figure out where I am. But that's, that's where I am with that. I just did a little tip of contrast color on the cuff. And I will see, I might just do a stripe on the toe because I don't have a ton left. And I need to get a whole nother heel uh, cuff tip. And I think I'm just gonna do, yeah, I think I'm just gonna do a toe stripe. But I just love having a pair of socks on the needles. It's just like fingering weight socks. I don't know what it is about it, but it is very different having a pair of fingering weight socks on the needles than it is having a worsted weight pair of socks on the needles. It just, whole different vibe. I look sick in this video because I am not wearing any makeup, so I'm nice and pink because I'm a very high color person and I have no eyelashes. I have, I have eyelashes, but they're very pale, so you can't see them. So I feel like I look a bit like an alien, which, you know, I can be into. The next whip I have, I have a lot of whips going on guys because of Christmas knitting. Also, I keep getting frustrated because a whip that I think will only take me a few days ends up taking me a few weeks and I get angry and want to cast something new on. So that's one of the things that happened with this one. This is my, I don't think anyone watches this who's getting Christmas gifts from me, but this is my, the big Christmas gift for my stepmom. I told you I was making her a pair of socks, but I'm also making her a traveler's loop. And I'm pretty far on it. As you can see, I have been working on it really hard these last couple days because I want it off my needles because I have so much other stuff going on. But I am, I think I just hit 50 bumps uh, garter bridges and I need 60 to be finished so I am only 20 rounds away from finishing and I love this it is exactly the same as the one I made myself I don't know if I've shown it on this podcast I think I did but it must have been at the very beginning because I definitely made it before I started podcasting but mine is brown and orange the color, but out of the exact same yarn, it is Fiber Spates Vivacious Four Ply, which is a fingering weight. And this is the color Copper Tones. And this is the exact same brown that I use for mine, which is actually the inspiration for this project because my stepmom saw this color and I've never seen her so excited about a color before and it's brown. So I thought it was really funny, but she was so excited. I love that brown. That brown is so beautiful. It's the most amazing color. So I bought her a skein of this. And instead of mine, I used, uh, it has peach in the name, but I can't remember the name, but it's an orangey color. Instead of using that color, which I used for mine, I picked a new contrast color. And this is a gorgeous, like purpley plum color. It's really rich and all of the different tones of purple and like burgundies in it is really fun. I'm not even a huge purple fan. And I love this color, but it is called, I can tell you if I get the tag. Oh, also it's in my Paisley and Gold sewing bag, which I'm so in love with. I really want to order another one when she comes out with her winter colors. I can't wait to see which ones they, what, I can't wait to see what they are, her winter colors. So I love this bag. My uh, leather strap is getting nice and soft, but give me just a second. I should probably just bring this with me, huh? My tags. All right. Copper tones, spiced plum. Spice, spice plum. 
Yep. So I'm really close to finishing. I accidentally started this ball on the outside and this ball on the inside, which is why they look so different. But I hope I can finish this today, honestly. That would be super great. Next, what do we have next? Oh, let's talk about my test knit. My test knit for Dagmar struck DK. That's her Instagram handle. This is the summer bliss blouse and I have shown it on the podcast before. I'm knitting it out of Miss Babs Katahdin in the color Whitsunday, which is this really amazing orangey, like sherbety or creamsicle orange. I love it. I love it so much. I am in the second cake. I finished one complete cake, which was half of the Katahdin approximately. I did not weigh them to be exactly half. I just went as far as my ball winder would go and then started again. Uh, but I'm into the second half of the Katahdin and I am doing the armhole shaping. I have hit, you can see here on this side really well, how it's going out. I've started my increases for the armpit and I have a few more rounds of that before I can actually start adding on for the sleeves themselves. And I'm very excited. It is going slowly but surely, but it is honestly super fun to knit, but I've been having to work on Christmas knitting, so it's taken a bit of a slow turn. But it is something that I really like to pick up because it is, even with this pattern and doing the sleeve increases, it is still fairly mindless. So I'm really enjoying it. The pattern is available now. It just is a bit incomplete for larger sizes. If you want to know like exact yardage you need and stuff like that, that's kind of what we're doing. Figuring that out. So that's how that's going. That is where my size two needles that I like are, which I need for Brad's Christmas sweater. So I need to go buy an exact same pair because I can't exactly afford to put that one just like on hold because it needs to get done. All right, the next whip I have is a Christmas present. This is a paper pattern, so I will not show you any details, but it is called, it is an Emily Green pattern, which I love Emily Green patterns. It is her Shore hat. And look at that pattern, it's so good. I wanted to get, I wanted to get, fancy with the hat this year. This is actually Brad's, um, did I say a Christmas present? It's not a Christmas present. It's a birthday present along with his socks. The sweater is his Christmas. The hat and socks are his birthday. His birthday's in December. So kind of, he, he gets double presents. Um, but I am using a skein of yarn from Kelburn Woolens. This is their Lucky Tweed and the color is medium gray. And it's got all these flecks of like tan and brown and black, and it's just a lot of fun. And it's actually knitting up super nice. It is wool and it is going to be super warm. And I have gotten, okay, so first of all, I picked up this pattern in this project because I wanted, all of my whips were taking too long. And I said, I need something fast and I need something that'll be like instant gratification. So I'll do a hat for Brad for his birthday. This is not a quick instant gratifying type of pattern. The cable pattern is so beautiful, but does require some attention. So it is not going that quickly, but I got this far on it. I have, all of this is the brim. I am going to be doing a folded brim. So it will be about this big, the fold on it. And then here is where the cabling starts, you can see. And you can also see how the colors are knitting up into this gray. It's so much fun, I love it. And he doesn't have a hat this color yet. And it's super thick. This was my first, um, what's it called? I want to say twisted. 
test on twisted twisted rib what's it called da, 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 tubular <laughs> tubular cast on it was my first tubular cast on and i love how it turned out it is super nice for a hat it was not fun enough that i would want to do it for like other things i think for like sweaters and stuff i would much rather do just like a folded him but for a hat i think it is perfect it's so good and yeah i think i am on row 11 or 12 of the chart and at 22 is when i start the decreases so it's going it's going my stitch marker here is from sassafras knits and it is the um pumice one i also had one on my summer bliss blouse from sassafras knits and i really enjoy them they are a lot of fun they bring me a lot of joy having the weight of the natural stones on your project <sighs> all right the last thing i have to show you i'm glad i brought my tags over my tag basket over here because this last one has lots of different colors in it if you are doing the west knits mcal and you are behind like i am i think a lot of people are if you are not behind or if you are behind and you don't want spoilers stop watching i am in the middle of clue two like almost exactly in the middle of clue two so look away I am working on my West Knits MCAL and I have pretty much given up hope that I'm going to get this done in any reasonable amount of time because I hear that it only gets crazier from here. But this is what mine looks like so far. This was clue one. This was bonus clue one. And then I'm about halfway through clue two. And I am so pleased with how these colors are coming out. I feel like maybe I should have done the pink and the red in here so it would be a little more subtle, but honestly, the section's not that big. So from a distance, I think it's fine. I usually prefer a more subtle look and this is very bold, but I think it's fine. The pink is what I used in here and I love how subtle that is. Yeah, there's that pink color. I do love this blue though so much. This is all 100% Superwash Merino in mushroom colorways from Coast to Coast Yarn Co. This, this girl is another one of those yarn dyers that just everything she does speaks to me. So she had her, her mushroom uh, collection come out a while back. I think it was in the summer, maybe end of summer. I don't remember. And I am using four colors from it. I am using the colorway Shrooms, which is the pink color. I am using the color Turkey Tail, which is the blue. I am using the color Amanita, which is the red. And I am using Golden Oyster, which is of course my main color, the golden color. So there's Amanita, there's Turkey Tail, there's Golden Oyster, and then there is Shrooms right there. But yeah, so I love slip stitches. I love uh, knitting, like mosaic style knitting. It's so much fun for me. I just, it's, it comes very naturally and I just have a good time doing it. Um, I was very skeptical for a while. Like when I was doing this section, I was very skeptical that I would like this shawl at all because despite liking slip stitches, I am not a huge fan of like this style of slip stitching. Like I never was interested in making his painted brick shawl because it's just not, it's just not me. I'm more of a fan of texture than I am of like effects like this. Like this section, glorious i love it so much this section i it was a hard sell i wasn't sure if i was going to keep going this section is a bit better i am enjoying working one color at a time and how much cleaner that looks 
but I have not been keeping uh, everything very secret to myself. Like I have been looking at the next clues and stuff to make sure that I still want to move forward with it. And I think I will like it overall. Half of that I'm pretty sure is the yarn because I love this yarn and these colors so much. Um, but we'll see. It is going to be a labor of love and I don't know. I mean, that's half the fun is knowing, you know, not knowing what it's going to look like. And it's kind of a gamble, you know, every year it's different. Like the Starflake, wonderful. I would have been so pleased if I had decided to do the Starflake. And this one's really different than that. But, you know, when it's all done, it'll definitely be the most unique piece like the most unique shawl in my wardrobe. So for that, it is a winner. All right, I think that is it for my whips. Yes, that is it for my whips. I'm really hoping to finish my traveler's loop today so I can get it off the needles. And I guess I can plan to finish his socks fairly soon because those don't take very long at all. I can finish his... Uh, worsted weight socks in the next day or two. Maybe not if I'm working on the Traveler's Loop all day today, but after that, the next day or two. And then those can be out of that bag. And by then maybe I will have gotten my second pair of needles and I can cast on that sweater because that's going to take me a while. It is a fingering weight sweater. Mm, I don't know what possessed me. Oh, let me show you the color of that sweater real quick. I have some uh, not caked up skeins over here. No, I'm gonna show you the cakes because they look better. Hold on. Show you over here in this in this light where you can actually see it. All right, this is also Coast to Coast Yarn Co. And this is also from her mushroom collection. That whole collection was just perfect. It was such a good collection. But this is the color. It's called eucalyptus and is that a ball is that a fuzz ball but look at the depth of that color it is so beautiful i got a cut on my finger oh my god so good this color is i don't like teal <laughs> like at all i've just never been a fan of teal and I saw this color and thought of Brad immediately because not only is it like a teal, but it is super dark. Like it's picking up much brighter on screen, on camera than it is in real life. It is super rich and moody and I just love those kind of colors on him. He pulls them off super well because he has really dark hair. Oh, it's going to be so good. And he's a very neutral skin tone, so he can pull off pretty much anything. Lucky. I... Like it actually matters. It doesn't matter if something looks good on me or not. I'll wear it anyway. I just wear what I like. Yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. I guess I could do. I've told you a little bit of um, a few life updates while I've been doing this, but is there anything else going on? Uh, working at the bakery has been fairly busy. I have still been enjoying it. It is much more physical than jobs I've done since graduating college, <laughs> I've always worked a desk job. So that's been really good for like my body. Like I've been steadily losing weight, which I guess is a good thing. I think I've lost about 10 pounds since I have been working there. And despite eating all the pastries, long pause thinking about all the pastries that we make and I eat, I come home with pastries every day. There's always, you know, extras at the end of the day or uh, extra slices of bread after making sandwiches, stuff like that. Uh, the weather turning is pretty great. My brother lives here with us now. He's staying with us just for a little while while he gets ready to go off to college. Uh, that was delayed because of COVID. Oh, speaking of COVID, I don't know how everything's gonna go soon. I finally found a knit group and we meet, I've only gone once so far. I missed the first week that I was invited because of work and I'm gonna miss this week because of work. But we meet outside and sit apart from each other. 
which is really nice not being inside anywhere um but still getting some like human interaction human knitting interaction it's pretty great and oh it's mine and brad's anniversary this week we will have been married for five years so we are fine we were going to go out to a dinner for the first time since covid so we are we have made reservations at a restaurant that is reservations only right now because of the current state of things and so they can con really control who sits where and how many people are in the restaurant at a time and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but since all this uptick in COVID stuff, it's making me really nervous. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, at, at the very least, we'll get our one, we haven't gone out to a really nice dinner since before COVID. So we'll get our one nice dinner before we have to go into lockdown again. <sighs> Yeah, not really a whole lot else going on. I am trying to really get back into the swing of making art regularly again because I've been kind of in a slump, but I think that is just par for the course with this whole everything. Like not only is it uh, COVID, but you know, the election tomorrow. Oh God, today's November 2nd. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's not great for your brain so it's not a great time here in america so it's just hard it's hard to stay motivated all you kind of all kind of want to do is just sit around and knit all the time because it's the only thing that really calms me down and makes me happy i've been watching a lot of Shit's creek which is not what i was expecting like i've been hearing people talk about it but i didn't actually know what it was um didn't expect it to be just like a sitcom but it's mindless and enjoyable so i've been watching it while knitting and yeah, we started watching God of High School yesterday, which if you're not a weeb is an anime. It was a manhwa in, uh, on Webtoon first and is now animated into a show season. One season is out and Brad started watching it yesterday and said, you need to watch this. So we started watching it together and it is pretty, it's fun so far. It's fun. It's a lot. I hear it only becomes more, but it's fun. Besides that though, it's been good. I'm going to probably paint here in a minute. I painted yesterday, completely unrelated, but I painted a lady with mushroom hair. It's been mushroom heavy content on the podcast today or vlog cast today, but she has mushroom hair. She was one of, I was doing a fall art challenge and I'm trying to I'm trying to make some hard decisions. I know this isn't my art, I know this isn't an art channel or anything, um, but on a personal note, it is my business and uh, my passion and a really big part of my life, like the biggest part of my life. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to make some decisions about my plans going forward, my business plans going forward because COVID has changed the look of small business for a lot of independent illustrators and with the added emotional stress and strain and all that going on, it's just hard to commit to big things, but you also still need to like make things and make money because it's your business. So I am currently going through my commitments and thinking about what can stay, what can go, what is reasonable for my plate and for me to carry. So if you're interested in seeing any more about any of that stuff, I have an art Instagram, I'll put it down below. That's where I put all my updates and such. But knit wise, I'm just working on Christmas. Oh, I completely forgot. Okay, so. I ordered two advent calendars, my little sausage fingers. This angle makes them look especially sausagey. Um, yes, I ordered two advent calendars this year and then one Christmas day advent, which is just a sock set for Christmas day from Coast to Coast Yarn Co. That I haven't gotten word for yet, but I imagine it'll probably be shipping this month sometime. But one of my advents is already here 
and my second advent, which is actually the first one I ordered, is arriving today. It's out for delivery right now and I'm so excited. But let me tell you a little bit about myself. Hi, I'm Lee and Christmas is my favorite. I just sounded like Buddy the Elf, but it actually is. My senior thesis in college was Christmas themed. I went my entire childhood enjoying Christmas a lot, like as a kid does, you know, we're like, oh, presents. Like I loved getting presents. Christmas day was always very exciting because my family went all out and I always got two Christmases because my parents were divorced. But once I got into, once I left home and went to college, I was suddenly struck. The, like the first year living away from home, I was struck with Christmas spirit and it has never left me. It is... I don't know, I, I can't explain it, but it is the most joy I feel all year. And I'm not religious. Hi, I'm Lee, I'm not religious. I don't enjoy Christmas for any of the religious aspects. I enjoy it purely for the joy of Christmas. Oh, I just, I love it so much. I feel like everyone gets this super hype for Halloween. And I'm just, oh, I really love fall, not Halloween specifically. And I really want to enjoy fall while it's here. But as soon as Halloween's over, it's Christmas. It's Christmas for me. But because of that, I definitely wanted to do yarn advents this year. And oh man, the first one came in and it was the second one I'd ordered. I had to talk myself into it because I'd already ordered one that I was very excited about. But this one just... I really felt like I needed it. I ordered the Woolberry Fiber Co. The Classic Advent, which is perfect, it's perfect for me. So I ordered it, but it is a slightly larger Advent. They're both uh, 24 minis and one large, but the Woolberry one comes with uh, extra goodies, like little like fun toys in it, like stitch markers and uh, I don't even remember what all comes in it, but there's like a long list of things that comes in it. So it's like the bigger advent and it arrived and I told Brad that I did not want to start it until December 1st because I really wanted to enjoy the advent for what it is properly. It is also, this is my first year getting yarn advents, so I've never done this before. I've only had those little like cheap chocolate advents before. So I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited for it. But I told him to hide it from me so I wouldn't be able to get to it. And I know that if I just don't know where it is, I won't go looking for it. Uh, and I haven't. But my second advent is coming today. And I am strongly on a fence right now for whether or not I want him to hide it too. Or if I want to start it November 5th. And or 6th, whichever, I'll have to look at a calendar, November 5th or 6th, and work my 25 days through one advent, and then on December 1st start a second advent and just have two solid months of advent. Part of me thinks that that sounds amazing because I'm basically celebrating Christmas by myself, like to myself in my heart for those two months anyway, because not only are we not celebrating Thanksgiving this year, but I normally don't make, like, Thanksgiving's not that big a deal for me. Especially since I don't eat turkey. Uh, but on the other side of that coin is I am planning on doing Vlogmas this year. And if I'm planning on doing Vlogmas, should I save both Advents for the sake of Vlogmas? I mean, I'll still have a whole Advent to open up for Vlogmas. And the whole point of Vlogmas is an Advents. I don't know. I probably won't get around to using the first Advent until after the holidays. So I can still show you the second Advent in Vlogmas. Hmm. I'm, I told you I'm strongly on a fence here. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I, I will decide when it gets here, I guess. It's supposed to be here this afternoon. Our mail doesn't come till late in the day, so. Until then, I'm gonna not think about it and then I'm just gonna wing it. I'm probably gonna open it early. I've seen a lot of people opening their advents already and I'm like, well, I mean, I understand. I totally get it. I don't wanna ruin my own fun, but I have two advents, so 
Maybe I will. Maybe I will ruin my own fun. Yeah, that was it. I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you about the advents. Those are like a big deal. Anyways, I think that's actually it. Fairly certain that's actually it this time. I'm going to drink my coffee and I'm going to make some art and I may or may not brush my hair at some point today. I probably won't because it ruins my hair when I brush it. I mean, it's pretty bad already. Like look how frizzy this is, but it's okay. It'll all be okay. I would love your input about how you, uh, how much you hated or enjoyed this vlog style podcast today, this vlog cast, because frankly, it was more fun to film. I know the video quality went in and out because of the lighting in here, but I'm sure if I do it a couple more times, I will be able to figure it out more and that'll be good so that it can get more like streamlined. And I know I blabbered a bit today, but it has been a few weeks since I've talked to you guys, so it's bound to happen. Bound to blabber a little bit. Anyways, thanks so much for joining me today. Vlogging also feels much more casual, so I feel like I don't have to edit quite as much out, which will be great because it'll be much easier for me to keep up with uh, podcasts slash vlogs if I get into a more streamlined vibe of uh, not having to sit down and edit for an hour to upload a video. Cause honestly, editing is my least favorite thing. I hate editing. It is why I pretty much abandoned my art Instagram, my art Instagram, my art YouTube channel because I had to edit those videos extensively and I hate editing videos. So the least editing I can get away with the better. So let me know what you think. It's very, Low pressure, very chill. But thanks for joining me today. I will try to keep more organized uh, on the things that are coming in for the next one so that I can be more certain about what you have seen and haven't seen because I feel like that's the thing I struggled with the most today. If I didn't wait so long between podcasts, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But thanks for joining me today. I will see you guys next time.